All right, I am back uh, with uh, more pack film uh, info. This time, uh, this episode, I'm going to cover what they consider their professional line of pack film cameras. Uh, their automatic line, which they made starting in '63, everything was, as it sounds, automatic. Uh, pretty much, you just cocked the shutter, hit the button, and uh, had a little eye that would figure out the exposure. But uh, professional. Uh, Photographers want to be able to control the aperture and the uh, shutter speed just like they did on their 35mm and medium format cameras. So Polaroid came out with the Model 180. It was, let's see, I think it was 65. Yeah. This particular one I have in front of you is the 195. Uh, the 180 is in this case, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, the, the 180 was made 65 to 69. And it costs like $190, which is like something like over $1,500 in today's money. So it was a costly camera, uh, but you got just was total craftsmanship throughout. Uh, and the 195, they didn't ma start making this guy till 74, uh, 74 to 76. So it is a lot newer. Uh, usually when you find these, maybe they'll be in a... A bit better shape just because they're usually almost a decade uh, newer. Uh, the main difference, the really, uh, well there are a couple differences, but the main difference, the 195 uh, is going to have a f3.8 lens. This is a uh, to uh, Tomanon. Uh, it's a badass lens, glass lens, a 3.8 uh, f-stop. The 180 at f4.5, and that's not a huge difference, but I mean a lot of people, they want the biggest f-stop they can get, so you get uh, more light in obviously, but you also get a greater depth of field. Uh, and the 195, uh, the other difference was the 180 came with the typical Zeiss uh, viewfinder, which is, uh, you know, just you look through one window and it composes all together inside. The, when the 195 came out, they went back to the uh, two-window Polaroid-made uh, viewfinder, which has the two separate focus and then compose. Uh, you know, I don't know if they didn't have enough of the Zeiss, why they did it, but a lot of people swap these out. It, it's real easy to swap these out. Uh, it's a little pin, and then you just exchange it, so that's what I did. I swapped mine out, but... Uh, other than that, that's generally the only difference. They, I believe they both have, I don't know if the 180 has the timer. I'll check and see when I pull it out. Uh, the 195 does have a timer. Uh, a lot of times these timers don't work. Mine does. Uh, the other thing you want to check on eBay when you're getting these, number one, like I say, in all, any kind of e-buying, purchasing, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, is hopefully they will allow you to they'll say that it works uh, and they'll allow returns and why that's important with the 180 and 195 is these have uh, uh, mechanical shutters in them they're like clockwork and being the 180 being made 65 66 67 a lot of times that needs what's called a CL clean and lube so uh, if they say it works through all the shutter speeds uh, that's a good thing or if you return if you get it and you go to take a picture and a lot of times you'll put it on like half a second I don't want to do it on this because I have film but uh, if you put it on like half a second go to take a shot and then it will uh, it'll get stuck here I have the I have another 180 down here it doesn't have any film in it so I can show you what I mean we'll put this on like uh, half a second. You can hear how it sounds a lot like clockwork when you hit the shutter. That's a half a second. There's a full second. I actually had on bold that time. There's a full second. Uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and go over the 180. I have another 180 inside. I have two 180s. But uh, the common features they have are... Uh, the aperture setting wheel, which we have here, uh, this goes from the four or five all the way to ninety, and ninety is just crazy. But again, they were they were making these to shoot three thousand speed film. So again, they even included a ND filter, four stop ND filter, uh, and the shutter goes from one five hundredth all the way to bulb. 
there is an EV scale on the 180 and what this does is like right now it says if I have it on uh, 4, 5 and uh, 250 it has a EV scale of 12 well you can change the aperture and speed wheel and then you just match it until it says 12 again and you're getting the same shot but at a different aperture and a different speed you can do all that in your head but this is just an easy way of course this doesn't have a uh, film speed setting because you're doing all the settings yourself I use a, a light meter uh, it's good to have one a lot of people just use their phone light meters uh, let's see oh and the one of the main things is the well not main but other differences they'll have instead of the little on the uh, Polaroid Auto cameras they always had like a little figure in a mountain on here they actually have the feet scale you will see on eBay sometimes it'll be a 180 or 195 front element here but then the body will have those stickers from the automatic and what's happened is someone's Frankenstein the camera they've like some the maybe the back housing was all rusty or whatever so they will uh, swap them out so if you want one that's you know how it was made at the factory you don't have to worry about it being switched out that's one thing to look for that's a dead giveaway is the meter scale uh, feet scale actually and since these don't have batteries uh, the, the little compartments of course are empty there's no need for battery on these cameras uh, it does have a PC sync uh, and uh, since it's a leaf shutter, I believe they call it, it can sync at any of the speeds, 500, 250, it's no big deal. You can set it on, X is for electronic flash, uh, M is if you're using the bulb flash, they make this real funky uh, bulb flash, which adjusts for your distance, which I'll get, uh, show you in a minute, uh, and a timer. And, a lot, and again, a lot of times you'll get these cameras off eBay, and the self-timer won't work, which... You know, it isn't a deal breaker because they do make a little contraption that goes on here that there's all over eBay that is a little timer and it hits. But I mean, it, it's good. I like every I like cameras where everything works. So I'll show you how that works. Hopefully, it'll, if you can hear that, it's going. They say in the book that it's usually around 10 seconds, and uh, it actually is set for. Uh, X I believe so they tell you in the instructions that if you're using the bulb you want it like I think at 130th or 160th just so it'll gives it time to sync properly uh, yeah and let's see uh, let's go ahead and go with what all was in this 180 kit uh, yeah and again see the 180 doesn't have a timer I didn't think it did the 195 does have a timer uh, I think they made a they made a 190. I think that has electronic and I so I went over in my other video. You don't see a lot of them anyway. I mean they're pretty rare to pop up, but the electronic timers kind of give you fits on uh, with the packed film uh, just because they're tight. Anyway, for the 180, they made a kit uh, that had all the accessories. The suitcase is made just for the 180. Let's see if you can see all that. I'm going to take a peek. You can. Cool. All right. So in here we have every option they made with the 180. Uh, so you've got a place where you can keep your film. Everything is conveniently labeled in case you forget. Uh, here is the... Um, so if you're taking a time exposure, you can use the plunger. Uh, and again, these will pop up separately, but it's good to add this in the kit, a little place your business card. But let's get to the uh, meat and potatoes. Okay, it came with uh, three different kits, as they call them. A couple of them are the same as I covered on the, the uh, auto Polaroids, a portrait and close-up kit. But it also has an additional, what they call, uh, they just label it generic filter kit. Basically, it's a... Uh, uh, to keep from flares. It's like a sun filter. It's made out of metal. Built to last. <laughs> it's in there tight. Uh, yeah, they, everything on Polaroid has a number. This is the number 598. Uh, but it has that guy in there so you can screw that on. And in addition, uh, before you even put that on, I use... I can get that back in there. It's tight. 
I use the UV filter, which again, if this hadn't been used yet, I have a couple of these kits. So I haven't actually used this one. Uh, I use my other one. It's got a UV filter, which you always have on there on the sun. And it actually has a, uh, a cloud filter. This is for black and white, which normally you would think, well, I don't need that. But again, you can get, it costs you a pretty penny, but you can get 3,000 speed still for uh, Fuji, shoot black and white. But usually I always have those on when I'm outside just because I don't want to worry about the... Here in Texas we get a lot of sun, so I don't know if I can snap it. There we go. Okay, then we have the portrait kit and close-up kit. These are a lot like the ones I covered in the automatic uh, video I did. Generally they're the same. They all even have, like if you get the... If you get the 195, it has the two windows, and if you already have the uh, two-window goggles for the 100, they're interchangeable, the goggles are. Or for the 180, these are the for the Zeiss single, uh, single window uh, uh, viewfinder. And you will find these also for the auto Zeiss that are just, the goggles are the same, but they have the, the ones for the automatic always have the little click-on... Uh, get that back in there correctly. I'll we'll do that in a second. They have the click on uh, lenses to where, of course, on the 180 and 195, it's a much bigger lens. So uh, these screw on. It's 45 millimeters fine, which is a, an unusual. The 45 millimeters and all that unusual, but the fine threads is, so you just can't go get these anywhere. Uh, you can use what's called a step-up filter. I'll cover that in a second because these kits are really hard to find. There, I'll get this right sooner or later. Uh, I mean, generally they only came with like if you bought this whole kit. So they're they're pricey. If you don't get it with the whole kit, uh, the close up again, it's just like the other one. It's got the goggle and the close up lens. Both these have the uh, a 4S stop. That is again for the three speed. Uh, if you don't have these kits. You can get from either, I'll put a link, but you can either get from B&H or a site called Wing Camera makes a step filter from 45 to 49. It has fine on the 45, which is what you need. And then on 49, then you can just get a standard. The portrait is, all it is is a plus one uh, standard uh, filter. And the close-up is a plus three. So you can just get the... Uh, you can get the filter that way, you know, made by a number of companies, and then the goggles from the automatic sets, and that way you more or less achieve the same uh, same thing. Next in the kit uh, is a little handy timer. Everything's labeled on here. I don't know if you can see that, but even, well, you can because it's covered, but everything in here has filter kit, timer, even has labeled for the shoulder strap. This timer, again, you don't really need this anymore because the Fuji, uh, if I can get it open, press, come on, Jerry, there we go. The Fuji stops automatically. I guess you might need it if you get the Kickstarter film, which Doc from Impossible Project and SuperSense are uh, starting. I'll put a link for that as well. But, uh, yeah, this is just your typical two-minute timer because, again, the 180 didn't have it on the back like the 195 does. It's got a little stop button there. Uh, you can, it's got, so you can put on your strap. It's got those holes there. Next up we have a uh, light meter. This actually goes on to the, on the 180 you'll see what looks like a flash socket and it's not really because if you try and put a flash on there you notice it'll short out because it's metal. You can put a piece of tape over that to keep it from doing that. Uh, but this is really what that was made for. This is a light meter, uh, and they use these crazy mercury batteries, uh, which you can still get. They kind of they run out. Uh, they're activated by air, but there is also a uh, conversion which will allow you to use regular batteries with this. Again, this is just something nice to have, just so if you want a complete kit. Obviously. There are plenty of modern light meters you can use. Uh, and it has a shoulder strap in here for this is for this actual case. Again, that is labeled. And one of the funky things I want to get to is this flash. 
uh, we will pull the camera out of here and we can get all to this. Uh, this is called the 280 flash gun. Uh, the, in my other video I showed the 268 which I guess, well you can't really use it for this camera because that 268 has a kind of funky port that's just for the automatic so you can't actually use that. One thing also to look for when you get the 180 or 195 online is these it's good that they have the original uh, case for it. Uh, here, plop this guy open. I can. There we go. Always have a problem on camera. So, uh, what this does, just before I put it on, you may be wondering what the hell is this thing. What they did was they uh, came up with a way to adjust the output by how you're focused. So as you move the focusing bellows in and out, this guy will move the light bulb in and out and adjust the uh, the output, which is kind of genius. <laughs> it's like Polaroid, just their engineering and know-how, which is crazy. Uh, and it's even got this little weird looking flying saucer thing on it. So it uh, has already covered the 180 and 195 both have a standard PC port, which is here. This guy on top doesn't do anything. Uh, unlike the 180, it had a little metal contact that I guess did sync or something. This is just a steady, this guy. So it tells you to kind of press in, and then you... There it is. Bob's your uncle. Uh, and that's it. And as you... See if you can see, as you focus in and out, you can see that the... Uh, it does the same. The batteries are actually in in this guy here. It takes two double uh, two triple A's, and a lot of time it's all corroded. You know, if you find one of these, it's good again, like anything else, to make sure it works before you buy it. Instead of the whole guy saying, "I don't know if it works," it uses a, I think it's called one B. Well, it's these guys I have up here, AG one B bulbs, and just like the other flash. When you're done, I can go ahead and hit this. It's got this button engaged here. You'll hit it. Spits. This will be like red hot. And uh, and as I mentioned before, the timer, or not the timer, the uh, gauge can go right up here. Uh, and again, that's metal. So if you want to use a, a modern flash. You just got to either put on another hot shoe on here or put tape over this because this will short your flash out. You're wondering why it's not working. It's because it's metal on metal. Uh, I don't have my battery in here right now. I take it out. But, yeah, that just goes on right like that. Whoever had this camera before, move the strap. Normally it's there. Uh, and move to the side, which makes sense because usually this would hit it. I thought at first maybe that's not plugged in all the way. There we go. It doesn't normally move around. That's why they have that guide. Uh, but, yeah, they I think they moved it just because it was bugging them. I think that is about it. I mean, these are awesome cameras. Uh, get the one with the... doesn't have the film in it. And, again, if you do end up getting a camera and the shutter's not working like it should... Uh, either return it obviously or if it's just a little bit slow a lot of times you're thinking you're using 130 and 160 if you want it exactly on uh, and uh, it's just frustrating especially the cost of film if you want to be dead sure of the shutter settings you can send it into retrospect they will completely CL the inside of this which is like a fine Swiss watch all those uh, the timers and uh, shutter wheels and all that in there for a flat fee of 200 bucks, they will do all that, check everything else as far as if you got any pinhole leaks. You know, sometimes it's hard to focus in and out. This one's a little tight. Uh, this one's spot on as far as I know, but, you know, I might eventually send it in. What they do is, just like a, a CK Grimes does for Copals, they will send you a test sheet which shows exactly what each one of these from one second to 500 exactly what it actually is after they adjust everything in milliseconds and so you will know that they just didn't uh, you know blow smoke up your ass about whether the the settings and once those are set I mean you should be good for another few decades because I mean it's lasted this long 
it just you know it needs probably a little bit of grease and a little bit of tender love but after that I mean you might be able to get one of these for 150 bucks where the guy says it I think it works and then he sent it to them for 200 and then for 350 you've got a state-of-the-art pack film dream camera alrighty oh and here's a I took this with uh, I think this I took this with the 195 if you can see that it's of a mural here in Austin they also another uh, tidbit is they sell these uh, Polaroid made these things that go on the back that make these hard so that they don't uh, bend and they have a tendency to bend after age they make these little stickers that go on here a lot of them have like addresses and stuff on the back you can find those too I have a whole stack uh, alright I guess that's it until uh, next time next camera model I uh, will check you later